Hello, Colleen here. Um, today I wanted to talk about corned beef. This is kind of crooked, sorry. Um, there we go. So I'm kind of working backward here. Um, I had already cooked the corned beef, but I will talk about that in a second. Um, and here, um, this is the liquid from the crock pot um, where I have been simmering carrots and potatoes because they take longer than cabbage. I'm going to add the cabbage to this. to cook for five or ten minutes <clears throat> until it softens. I'll set the timer for five and then I'll check it. Um, here I have started some diced potato, red potato. The red potato time of year. Um, I'm making some corned beef hash and again the potatoes take a lot longer than the onion and the corned beef which are also diced. So um, that's just one pretty big red potato, a bit of olive oil. I'm gonna cook that until it's tender. It's got a ways to go still. Um, before I add the other ingredients. And I will season it after it's done cooking. Um, I'm sure I'll want pepper, but corned beef, um, is salty. It's cured in salt. Um, so getting back to the cooking of the corned beef. <clears throat> oh, and here, sorry, here I have um, the beginnings of a Reuben sandwich, um, some sliced corned beef, some sauerkraut, I have over on the butcher block um, a grilled onion sliced for the sandwich. Um, but again, I don't want to get all these things necessarily going all at one time. So, This is the second corned beef I purchased this season. This one happened to come from Save-A-Lot. It was $2.99 a pound. They are saying that this is a point cut, but it absolutely looks like a flat cut to me. And this is the fatty side, and this is the seasoning packet. So, I like to cook these in the crock pot, and I have made these many times in the past and thought I didn't like them until I figured out how to cook them correctly. So, um, I'm famous for not saying everything I mean to say, so I do, do have some notes here. Okay, so um, using the crock pot, I start the crock pot on high and leave it on high for about an hour until steam starts to form on the lid and then drop it to low. And um, if you don't have like an instant read thermometer like this, 
they cost somewhere in the neighborhood of like eight to twelve dollars this one is very old it's actually kind of greasy or something discolored um, but anyway I cooked the corned beef until it had an internal temperature of 180 um, and how long that takes depends on your slow cooker and the size of your size and cut um, of your brisket um, some people say to cook it up to 200 at which point it will be falling apart um, falling apart corned beef is overcooked I mean, if that's the way you happen to like it that's fine but I have found 180 to be kind of perfect um, and I want to show so I actually cooked the brisket on Friday gave my daughter a Reuben sandwich yesterday I have had Reuben Friday and yesterday today is Sunday and will be my third Reuben the um, corned beef hash I will actually just you know put in the fridge for another time um, but anyway this is the fat layer that came out of my slow cooker and oopsie just dropped some of it on the floor anyway I'll be throwing that away but um, I did want to show like there's a lot of fat um, in a corned beef and so I personally wouldn't want all of that in my vegetables again different people prefer things done different ways okay um, this is still a little bit under but I'm gonna turn off the heat and just let that steam so anyway, um, I removed the fat from the cooking liquid <coughs> before I started cooking the vegetables in that liquid. Let's see if I can do this without setting this towel on fire. So the corned beef was cooked with onion a, a whole small onion and some um, celery and carrot to add to the flavor so that broth is like divine um, and I cut up a potato fairly large cut And there's my carrot, which I cut so that I can tell it apart from the carrots that have cooked um, with the actual brisket. Not that these would be bad, but um, they've been cooked a very long time. As opposed to the potato and carrot and cabbage, <coughs> Um, what I've got going there now. Here, here I go again. A lot of things going on all at once. Okay. So corned beef hash is oftentimes Um, all the ingredients are diced very fine, very small, and it doesn't have much texture. I prefer more this coarse chop so that it will have texture. Um, 
won't resemble dog food. <laughs> it's the gist of it. So there we go with that. Um, okay, where did I leave off with the cooking of the brisket? Okay, so crock pot. <coughs> I started on high <coughs> just to bring the meat, you know, up to temperature. Cook the brisket until 180 degrees internal temperature. I let the meat rest 20 minutes before slicing. And <coughs> once the um, meat is cooked and rested, it can actually be a little bit challenging to figure out the grain of the meat so that you want to slice it against the grain um, to make it more tender. And um, after it has rested, if you just kind of pick at it with a fork until you can pull off a little chunk of it, you will see like the strings of meat and you want to slice against those so that um, those are cut. And then you would, even if you're going to have this for your dinner that day, um, after you slice it, you would reheat it on the stove top. Um, one of the big mistakes that I think I used to make with corned beef back when I thought I didn't like it was I would try to cook it, um, pull it out of the pot, slice it and serve it like immediately. Um, and I skipped the resting process. So this is sort of like if you cook a steak, you need to let the meat rest before you slice it or all of the juices run out of it and it becomes dry. So um, you can see that that little bit of corned beef that I put in with the potato and onion is already like rendering out more fat. This is a very fatty meat, which is fine as long as you are prepared for that. You'll notice like I have a lot of potato here compared to the amount of meat because you know, the potatoes can handle a lot of fat and it makes them good actually. Okay, so I think that's fine for now because like I said, I don't intend to eat this today. So I'm gonna pull that off the heat. And then here, I'm starting my Reuben sandwich. Um, I grilled these onions up in a bit of olive oil a few minutes ago, just right before I started filming. Um, I'm going to put this meat away because I'm not cooking it today. Okay, so Reuben sandwich is sauerkraut corned beef, optionally um, grilled onion, um, Swiss cheese, and Russian dressing um, grilled on rye bread. And the Russian dressing is basically very similar to Thousand Island, but it has a little more of a kick. And I roughly followed the recipe I found at finecooking.com. Um, there are lots of versions of Russian dressing. Um, I think you could take a bottled Thousand Island and add a little bit of 
horseradish to it and maybe a little bit of some kind of hot sauce or spicy element um, and you would pretty much have what you're looking for in a Russian dressing. So I have this um, Jewish pumpernickel rye bread. I'm just heating up the sauerkraut um, and the corned beef, which has been in the refrigerator. Gonna put just a little bit of butter on this bread so that I can get a nice toasted finish on it. There's my corned beef hash, which I will add eggs to and eat probably tomorrow. Okay, so rye bread into this pan, which has a little residual fat left in it. Not gonna hurt anything. Well, sometimes these packages are so hard to open. There we go. So I like the bread to be completely covered with the cheese. So that takes about one and a half slices. For a second, and I guess I'll just use my hands to put the onion onto the sandwich. Washing my hands, sorry. I'm sorry for the delay. Okay. So my little tongs cool down. So this pan was completely dry when I started to heat this um, meat and sauerkraut. And mostly I'm just trying to take the chill off of it, but quite a bit of fat will still come out of it. And that is due, at least in part, to the fact 
then I let the meat rest before I cut it. So all of that fat didn't just immediately run out of the meat. And that's where a lot of the flavor is. But if you're counting calories, this might not be the right thing. I'm just saying. Okay, so that's ready to go onto my sandwich. And we're making this kind of like a grilled cheese. I'm gonna get that Swiss cheese to melt. Load up all this beautiful stuff. I love a Reuben sandwich, but obviously, um, it's not every day that you make a corned beef brisket. And I don't know, deli meat is just not even close to the same. So I'm going to just go ahead and pile some of this Russian dressing on. Um, when I made this for my daughter, it was actually kind of funny. I had the Russian dressing on one slice of this rye bread and butter on the other side. I ended up with butter all over the place, all over my hands. Again, we just need a little butter to get that nice crust on the bread, toasted, finish. And this bread is really, really big for this pan. Flipping the sandwich is a bit of a trick, and some of the stuff comes out. That was more than a little bit. I've been overzealous with that. There's an awful lot there. Yeah, a bigger pan would probably <coughs> help a lot. cleaning the stove <laughs> often okay so I have turned off the flame on the sandwich I don't want to burn the bread Looking at bay leaves, I think I forgot to mention that um, I also added two bay leaves to the crock pot when I was cooking the corned beef.
so show the celery that cooked the entire time the corned beef was cooking, the onion also cooked the entire time, the bay leaf, I had already showed you a carrot, so onion, carrot, celery, bay leaf, and the spice packet that came with the corned beef. Um, and I added about a cup of water into the crock pot. Uh, a lot of recipes um, suggest covering the corned beef with water, um, which is a suggestion to boil it rather than allow it to steam. Um, which of course is going to reduce the flavor. So there we go. There's my veggies. fell out. Well, it'll be okay. I'll still eat it. Kind of made a mess of things today. to share with you um, how I cook the corned beef perfectly, how I make a mess with a Reuben sandwich, sorry about that, um, how to get the flavor from the corned beef liquid into your veggies without cooking them to death. Um, and then this would be the beginning of corned beef hash, which I'll just reheat and add egg to um, when I go to eat this. So that's everything. Um, I wanna say I really didn't used to like corned beef until I figured out how to make it and the crock pot on low is definitely a lifesaver. Um, this just so don't release all that steam into the house um, okay I'm gonna go ahead and have my Reuben sandwich now um, yeah so that's it for today um, sorry I just you know, have too many things going on all at once and a little bit um, confused basically on the on the talking but um anyway i hope you get the gist of it and have a wonderful saint patrick's day dinner thanks for watching bye bye